just requires you to simplify more. My question is, what exactly, if I'm supposed to rationalize the denominator, what exactly am I supposed to get rid of here? The root one. Am I trying to get rid of the two? No. I don't care about the two. The two is not in the square root. What I'm trying to get rid of is the square root of y, not just the Okay, so when I, when I multiply, which I know I'm going to have to do, because multiplication is the only way that you can get rid of a square root, at least in one spot of this fraction. When I multiply, do I want to multiply by another 2 here? No, I really don't care. I don't care about the 2. What I care about is the square root of y. What am I going to multiply by then? Sure, why not the root y? That would work. Let's see why that works. On the numerator, I'm going to have 3 root y. We've done that a lot. 3 root y, nothing else I can do. On the denominator, am I still going to have a 2? Yes. yes. Am I still going to have a root y? No. no. Oh, this is this is if you ignore the top. Two times root y times root y. The root y's are what I care about, right? I don't care about the twos, which is why we don't have another two. This two, that's fine, that's great. But I'm looking at root y times root y. That's giving you just y. That's why <laughs> we do that. Now, can you simplify anything else in this problem? Can you simplify these y's? No. no, you can't. You can start seeing patterns also when you start simplifying square roots, uh, where, where numbers go also. We're going to try something a little bit different? No. Too bad. cube root 2 over x. No, wait a minute, sir. Wait a second, Mr. Leonard. I thought we were supposed to be rationalizing here. I thought we were supposed to have something on the denominator, uh, a root on the denominator, and then move it to the numerator. But do I even have a root on the denominator? No. I do? Oh, somebody said, yeah. Why do I have a root on the denominator? Uh, I could. So when you get this problem, you still do need to rationalize. Because right here, this, this really says... It's not really the cube root of 2 over x. I could write it as the cube root of 2 over the cube root of x. Do you believe me? Yeah. Okay, now. Now. I'm going to rewrite this, this down here. So same thing. Just a little bit bigger. Cube root of 2, cube root x. I'm trying to rationalize which one? So am I trying to get rid of the root? Here? No. Here? Yep. No. Okay. I'm still going to multiply by something. That's the only way you can get rid of a root. Here's the question we, we talked about just a little while ago. In fact, this is on the board. If you're not really paying attention to me right now, you're probably going to think that the same thing that we did is going to be the same thing we're going to do here. But I want to show you again. Is that going to work? No. no. No, what's going to happen is that this thing, this thing would give you the cube root of x squared. Does the cube root of x squared actually simplify out of this expression? No. You have a problem here. What you want to happen is the cube root of x cubed. So you really have to, have to notice what type of root you're dealing with. If it's a square root, things are pretty easy. You just multiply by whatever root is there. That's nice. If you don't have a square root, if you have a cube root, a fourth root, a fifth root, whatever, you have to match up the power of the root. That's how we simplified radicals in the first place. So instead of the, square, uh, the cube root of just x, what needs to go here in order to make that? Because that's what you want. You want x squared. x squared. x squared. Does this make this? Yep. That's what I want. Now, whatever you had here, just like you're making uh, equivalent fractions when you did adding and subtracting, you're doing the same thing up here. You have to multiply the same exact thing. So this becomes cube root of x squared as well. It's got to make a 1. It's got to be 1. Raise your hand if you're okay with this. Why do you have to have a square there? Do you understand why? Yeah. Okay. Now, I have a cube root and a cube root. Can I make that one cube root? Mm -hmm. Sure, let's do it. I've now got the cube root 
of 2x squared. Lastly, we're going to simplify, simplify whatever we can. You'll notice that I'm doing the ex, an extra step here that I didn't do on my square root so you see where it's, what's happening. What is the cube root of x cubed? Can you tell me? Yeah. That's why we did that whole step. Because we knew we wanted to match the power of the root. If we do that, we get a cube root of 2x squared all over x. Were we successful in getting rid of the root on the denominator of our fraction? Mm -hmm. yeah. One more thing I want to show you before I let you go here. We'll start with examples of this next time, which you're going to do. <clears throat> if you're ever faced with doing a root like this, if you're ever faced with that, of course, you are going to break it up in the same manner. Square root of 2 over the, I'm sorry, the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 25. Now, the cube root of 25, it, it's going to be very difficult if you go ahead and you multiply this by the cube root of 25 squared over the cube root of 25 squared. It's a huge number. Instead, what I'd like you to do, see if you can make this a little bit better. Well, wow, watch. Instead of thinking about this as 25, maybe I think about this as the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 5 squared. Does that work for you? Is that still 25? Mm -hmm. Then instead of multiplying by the cube root of 25 squared over the cube root of 25 squared, all I've got to do, check this out. Oops. Okay, what I want out of this is something over the cube root of 5 cubed. Do you see why? Mm -hmm. I want 5 cubed because I want the power of the root. What do I need to multiply by in order to get 5 cubed? Yeah, just do that. That's a lot better. It's a lot easier. Instead of having 25 squared in there, you simply have 5. <laughs> 625 versus 5. Okay, you, you want 5. Does this make sense to you? Yep. So try to simplify that first. Maybe write that as, as a power. And then you have to multiply by something much smaller. This, notice, does make 5 cubed. This is going to make the cube root of 10. 2 times 5, that gives you 10. Cube root and a cube can simplify out. You get a cube root of 10 over 5. And that's as far as you can go. You can't simplify the 10 over 5, you're done. Do you follow? Yeah. I'm going to feel okay about this so far. All right. So if you remember from last time, we'll rationalize which means remove the denominator's square root or whatever root you have. So in our first example, we're learning that, well, of course, we do have a root on the bottom of our fraction because we know by the quotient rule, we can separate this as a square root of 5x over the square root of 11y. Now, if I ask you to rationalize the denominator, are we trying to remove the, the root on the top or the bottom of our fraction here? Okay, so we're trying to remove the square root of 11y. We also learned from last time. Are we going to be able to eliminate roots altogether with this or just move them around? Basically, just move them. So we're trying to eliminate the square root of 11y. Can you tell me what I need to do in order to eliminate the square root of 11y? Divide it by 11. Well, we can't divide anything. We're not going to be dividing. We are going to be multiplying. What specifically do I need to multiply by in order to get rid of the square root of 11y? What do you know about square roots? If I use the exact same one, the exact same one, with square roots. Okay. So, if I multiply by the square root of 11 y, is that going to get rid of the root? Yes. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. If square root times itself gives you the radicand. You guys need to be with it today. You look a little unfocused, to be honest with you. You're just kind of sitting there. I need you to participate and be with it today, even though it's early in the morning. This is our class. Uh, so. When we have square root of 11y times square root of 11y, we know that that's going to eliminate the, that square root for us. Is this appropriate to do it just like that? Yeah. Where else do I need the square root? Now let's see what happens. Folks, square root of 5x times square root of 11y, can I make that under one square root? Sure, absolutely. If it's square root times a square root, I can do that. The product rule says that I can make this the square root of 55xy. Are you seeing where the 55xy comes from? That's cool because we have two square roots. That's all right. Now, how about the square root of 11y times the square root of 11y? What is the square root of 11y times itself? How much does that give you? 
Yeah, do you need to do the square root of 121y squared? No, forget about it. You have a square root times itself. That's one of the main things I'm teaching here today is the square root times itself gives you the radicand. So here we'll get 11y, and that successfully rationalizes our denominator. We've removed the square root from the bottom of our fraction. Have we moved it, removed it all together? No. No, we can't do that. All we can do is move it around. We can only get rid of the square root if we have an equation. I'm going to show you that in the next section. How many people feel okay with this so far? That's not a whole lot. Are you guys all right with this? People who are here are not walking late? Okay, next one. We got the fifth root of x squared over the fifth root of 32y to the 12th. Oh my gosh. If I'm asking you to rationalize the denominator, let's start over. What does rationalize the denominator mean? On the bottom. Okay, on the bottom. Sure, on the denominator. What root am I trying to get rid of here? Fifth root. Not a square root anymore. Hey, you know what? We learned something last time. We learned that a square root times itself gives you the radicand. Does a fifth root times itself give you the radicand? That's something you have to know. Does a fifth root times itself give you the radicand? No. Now, there's something weird that happens with those, those powers, right? We need to match up a power with a root in order to simplify it. Here, that's nice because a square root times itself gives you something squared. And square root simplifies something squared. That's, that's great. That's why that worked the way it did. With a fifth root, what I would be getting is, if I multiply it by itself, I'd be getting a fifth root of something squared. And we know a fifth root really doesn't simplify something squared. It has to have the power matching up with the root. Nod your head if you're okay with that. All right, so in order to simplify this one, we'd have to multiply by something and give us a fifth root in there. However, do you notice how we have 32y to the 12th? I hope you do, because it's right on the board. We have a uh, fifth root of 32y to the 12th. One thing I told you about this when we first started was if you can simplify it, simplify it. Can you simplify this one? No. Can you simplify this one? Yes. Absolutely do it. It's going to make your life so much easier because you're not going to have to simplify it later on. So what we're going to do now is as soon as we see these problems, simplify it whatever you can. Now, now, listen carefully. I know that some of these things seem contradictory to you because about three sections ago, I told you whenever you see a root over a root, you combine them first. You, can, you remember me telling you that? You do. You do when you're simplifying. When you're simplifying and you have a root over a root, you combine those things because you're going to be able to simplify your like terms. You remember that? Your, your like uh, x's and your like y's. Do I have any like x's, like y's, or like numbers? then that wouldn't do us any good. Okay? When we're rationalizing, we're doing something different than simplifying. When we're rationalizing, we're moving around a root. When we're simplifying, sure, we're putting things together, we're crossing things out, and then we're simplifying. So there's a difference. Listen, there's a difference between simplifying and rationalizing. When you read one word, you do one thing. When you read another word, you do this thing. Okay? Rationalizing, you're going to be doing this process. You're going to simplify each one individually, then rationalize. When you're simplifying, it's different. You do put them together, you simplify what you can, and then you simplify that radical as a whole. Are you seeing the difference here? Okay, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit, I don't want to say tricky, it's not tricky. Each thing has its own little process, but that gets confusing to some people. And so I want to make you aware that we're doing several things in this chapter. You need to be paying attention up here. We're doing several things in this chapter that look very similar. Very similar. If you're not really with it and you're just going, oh, I can do that right now, but then you learn something else that looks similar, you go, I can do that right now. And I ask you with those questions next to each other, and one thing you do 